What the heck is up, you guys? It's your boy Ace, aka Animated Heroes, here back with another action figure review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at none other than the SH Figure Arts Jujutsu Kaisen Greatness Suguru Ghetto from Tokyo Jujutsu High. Basically, it's him when he was a teenager, or from the Hidden Inventory slash Premature Death arc. This is one I have been waiting on. I am super excited for this. So, let's go ahead and get right into it, starting off with the box. Now the packaging does fit the same theme that we have been getting with our previous Jujutsu Kaisen figures. As you can see, it does have the coloring along the sides here and then uh, just kind of scribbled in behind the figure. I do wish that the box was black. I feel like it would make the colors look a little bit better. As you can see, it's the same on the Gojo figure. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, you can see the window where you got the figure. It says SH Figure Tsuguru Ghetto right there. Jujutsu Kaisen at the bottom. Uh, Tamashi Nations Bandai. The quality sticker of approval. Uh, some images of the figure. Face plates and accessories along the side here. Nothing on this side. Image of him at the top, image of him at the bottom, and then of course on the back, we've got the figure up top with some of the accessories once again, and then a bunch of stuff at the bottom I can't read because I imported it. Now anyway, let's go ahead and bust this figure open because again, I am really, really excited for this one and I've heard nothing but positive things. Now, straight out of the packaging, I will go ahead and confirm that any positive thing that was said about this figure prior to me receiving it is absolutely 100% true. This figure right here just truly goes to show that Tamashi Nations is really putting more effort into the Jujutsu Kaisen line. Now, don't get me wrong. All of the figures that I've received have been a joy, but I think a lot of it has been biased because some of the figures that I personally enjoy, I can admit that they had some flaws, especially characters like Megami, who had some real limitations, um, and then maybe Nobara, where a few things could have been better here and there. But when it comes to figures like this one and the Teenage Gojo that was released prior, they are absolutely outstanding figures, man solid 10 out of 10s and i don't, don't want to go ahead and give this one a 10 out of 10 just yet but aesthetically it is definitely that man this figure looks amazing and i don't know how many of you guys know this but um i'm pretty sure many of you think that satoru gojo is my favorite character which modern day satoru gojo yes but honestly i really liked suguru ghetto more uh before he turned evil i still thought he was a badass as an evil villain but um i liked him so much more around this time just because i kind of relate to him man his his serious nature but the fact that he could be goofy whenever he wanted to i just really like that but anyway that's neither here nor there i'm kind of deriving away from the figure and just talking about my love of jujutsu kaisen which you guys know i have uh but anyway let's go ahead and take a closer look at him so we can examine some of the details getting up close and personal i'll say this from the jump I really love the look of this neutral expression that he comes with right out of the packaging. He's got his signature kind of bland smirk on his face. Um, I love how they printed the eyes. Everything looks so clean. The earrings look really good. The gauges, I'm pretty sure that's what they are. The little man bun. I've never cared for a man bun, but true story, Suguru Ghetto actually made me start rocking the man bun. Uh, and I think it's cool, man. He looks really, really badass. Now, when it comes to his Jujutsu outfit, it's pretty much the same as Gojo's. As you can see, it's got the smaller collar right here, the long sleeves. You've got the button, right? here on the chest all the sculpted detail and wrinkles look really good i think it could have used some shading but i'm not going to complain because based on the way that the light hits it it's always going to look like they're shading anyway so i'm fine with that as you can see the wrinkles do carry over to the back as well um the hands and everything look really really good i'm just loving this now the only thing where the differences start to uh show are the pants now he wears the really really baggy pants and honestly i think they're a lot baggier than this actually but tamashi nations decided not to overdo it and i'm kind of glad that they didn't i really like how this looks right here i don't like them when they're just really overdrawn this is perfectly fine here it doesn't look too big doesn't look too bulky so i'm happy with this again the uh sculpted wrinkles and everything carry right over 
all the way from front to back and it just looks nice and then all the way down to the feet i like that he doesn't wear the uh, traditional shoes either uh the ones that are healed he actually has on some black sandals as you can see here and i dig these man i really dig that there's at least some differences between his outfit and gojo's man i really really like this figure it just it looks good man it looks really really good now, when it comes to the height of this figure, to the top of his head, he's right at about six and a quarter. As you can see, definitely a little bit over six inches, not quite six and a half, which I think that's fine because I want to say Gojo stands at about six and a half inches and he is taller than Suguru. That is confirmed. But um, yeah, we will be doing some size comparisons later just to see how he stacks up with other JJK figures as well as some extras that I pull out. Moving on to the articulation, he looks up about that much, but one thing you have to watch out for is that gapping in the neck, and there's really no avoiding that if you tilt the head back. Um, without that gap in the neck, he's not really going to look up much at all. That's about as much as you're going to get, sadly. Now, looking down, a whole lot better, as you can see, and something's coming off of him. There we go. Uh, but yeah, he looks down a whole lot better. Uh, he does get really good range of movement at the neck and the head. I'm pretty sure it's on a double ball peg, so that's what's going to help with that. The arms go up and out about that much, so those uh, T-poses and everything are going to be fine. You don't have to worry about that. Now, when it comes so this joint right here i did that on purpose um it's kind of like it pegs down into a socket right there so when you're bringing the arms forward you got to make sure you rotate them properly or they are going to pull or pop out if i can speak but uh yeah they are going to pop out but basically what you do is you just rotate them forward and i can't get this one to go back in there but i'm gonna leave all of this on camera there we go uh there we go but yeah, just make sure you rotate those properly or again, they will pop out. And I'm not doing it on purpose, but trying to do it on camera is making it a little difficult. But uh, yeah, he can punch all the way forward if you want him to. He does have a built-in uh, swivel, at, but it's not actually at the bicep. It's actually at the shoulders here. So yeah, just be wary of that. He does have double jointed elbows that bend all the way in. That's really dang good. The hands are on a ball peg, very, very sturdy ball peg. Only limitations you're going to get are the sleeve, which I mean, it makes sense. There's really nothing you can do about that. Now the diaphragm here, look at that. He moves fine backwards, uh, forward. Just make sure you kind of tuck this piece back under. Uh, and then this back piece right here, the plastic can come out. So make sure you tuck that back whenever you're posing him around. And other than that, he's going to move very, very well. Tilt, turn, all that good stuff. Anything you want, uh, it can be done. So then you can also turn him at the waist and you can utilize the waist for more articulation forward and backwards. So that's really good. Uh, when it comes to the legs, he kicks out about that much. Uh, kicks back about that much, but it kind of goes outward because he does have a sculpted butt flap. Um, he does the splits about that much. He does have a thigh swivel, double jointed knees that are very, very effective despite the bulky pants. And honestly, I really do like this look. Hopefully they can carry something like this over to the bleach line eventually, but because of all the uh, line work that the bleach figures have in the pants i don't know if it's possible but it would be worth trying because i think those knees are what's making a lot of people not want to buy them but these look really really good uh or the best that they can look rather his foot goes down about that much up about that much very very generous ankle rocker and then he does have a toe hinge so articulation wise you can get this guy posed up like for real man there's really really nothing that you can't do with this guy like you can get him down and dirty if you if you truly want to. Now, granted, there's going to be some restrictions that are in the torso, but for the most part, you can really get this guy posed up, man. Now, when it comes to accessories, he comes with quite a few, but I feel like there is one or two things missing that they could have included. Of course, I'll get to that in just a second. First off, he comes with a neutral smiling head sculpt and a pair of fist hands right out of the packaging. Pretty much the standard for most Tamashii Nations figure. He does come with uh, a serious face, which I'm glad that they included, and it looks 
pretty dang nice i dig that then he comes with his angry face this is for when he found out that gojo lost to toji and he says die which speaking of toji we need the toji figure just being honest well, what's the deal tamashi nations but anyway he does come with two different laughing faces as well which this is the same thing they did with gojo honestly i feel like one of these could have been substituted i really would have loved if they gave us the uh looking to the side confused face for when he's like hold up you talking to me while he's on the phone i would have loved having that or maybe just another angry face but two laughing faces i feel like is completely unnecessary but whatever we got it um now anyway he does come with his cell phone right here, which this does look really good. I think he got the uh, the BlackBerry. I don't know what that is. Definitely ain't no iPhone. But um, yeah, he comes with um, this martial arts hand right here. I really, really dig this a lot. A little bit of diversity in there. So I'm happy with that. He does come with these kind of reaching stylish pose hands. And he comes with an extra one for his right hand as well and i think this is for when he's using his curse technique and then he does come with two of these for when he has his hands in his pockets and then he does come with these two palming type hands as well so several different sets of hands several different face plates i'm happy with all that but um now let's get into the problems so let's say you have the previous Suguru Ghetto figure, which is him from the JJK Zero movie, basically the evil version when he started calling everyone monkeys. Um, you can interchange the hands between this newer version and the older version, but you can't change the face plates. And why Tamashi Nations decided to do that, I have no idea. And I'll show you guys just so you know that I'm not saying this and can't back it up. And of course he falls over. But um, yeah, anyway, we'll move him center stage because he's the main one here. If you look, the head shapes and everything are pretty much the exact same. But then when you flip them around, completely different at the back here. And so you can't change these faces between the two. And I feel like that is a complete missed opportunity because this would have given us the perfect chance to have even more expressions among our Suguru Ghetto figures. And then also, it probably would have made some people backtrack that missed out on the previous release or decided not to get it. Um, I don't know why Tamashi Nations does this. Now, granted, it's possible you could probably switch the heads, but then it's going to be completely inaccurate because this one doesn't have the rest of the hair that's grown out on this version. And so it's just... I don't know, man. Tamashi Nations, I know that's something that had to have come up in the meeting when making this figure. Like, there's no way you can tell me something like that wasn't considered. But again, you can swap the hand. So if you want him holding the cursed orb for whenever he uh, absorbs a cursed technique, or if you want the uh, newer version holding the cell phone, you can do that. But it's still just like, come on, Tamashi Nations, really... Now, since I mentioned it, I figured I might as well go ahead and add this segment in here as well. For the people that want to just swap out the heads, maybe you want to put this new ghetto head on the old body or the old ghetto head on the new body. You can't even swap them out by the pegs because the neck pegs are completely different sizes. As you can see, the one on this one, the newer one, is much bigger than the older one. So if you even try to put it in the socket right here, it's just going to fall off. It's not going to fit at all. So basically, when it comes to swapping out the heads, the interchangeability is just not there. Moving on to size comparisons, here he is standing next to one of the more recent releases. We have him standing next to the SH Figure Arts Oi Toto, which is a solid figure. We also have him standing next to the SH Figure Arts Hidden Inventory Arc Satoru Gojo, which I love the look of these two figures together, man. Just, they just look so good side by side. And then, of course, we have him next to his older self the uh evil version per se of satsuru gojo and honestly i really think this hidden inventory arc is a much 
cooler looking figure. I like him before he became the bad guy, man. He just looks so dope. Next out here, we have him sitting next to the first release of the Jujutsu Kaisen line, the SH Figuarts Yuji Itadori, the main character. Then, of course, we have him standing next to the SH Figuarts Megami Fushiguro, who I don't think he actually ever met Megami. Um, I don't know, but he definitely didn't in Zero, but Gojo had recruited him by that time, so maybe Maybe Megami just wasn't at Jujutsu High whenever Suguru attacked. I don't know, but I don't think he ever met Megami. And then, of course, we have him also standing next to the main, main character, the Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, Yuta Okutsu. Now, of course, you guys know I did have to throw in some of my Figmas. Here he is standing next to the Figma Megami Fushiguro, the Figma Kinto Nanami, which is a terrible figure, but it looks good. And then we have him standing next to the Figma Satoru freaking Goat Joe, the one and only. Lastly, for some random extras, here he is standing next to a Marvel Legends Amazing Fantasy Spider-Man. We have him standing next to a Sentinel SV Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Spider-Man Noir, which is a very sick figure. Definitely one of my favorites of the year. I just reviewed it. Go check that out if you haven't already. And then lastly, we have him standing next to a Jack's Pacific Movie Super Sonic. Now, at this point, it's starting to feel like I'm beating a dead horse when I constantly tell you guys how much I enjoy the JJK line. And seriously, this is just another figure added to the line that I absolutely love, man. I, I'm not going to get tired of this line anytime soon. Now, I know some people might say they have some of the more simple designs. They're nothing like other anime characters that have more intricate looks or more stylish looks. This is all I need, man. The JJK anime is quickly, or JJK anime and manga, is quickly becoming my favorite anime and manga of all time. And by the time it ends, as long as Gege Akatame, whose birthday was just recently, actually it was yesterday, happy late birthday, Gege Akatame Sensei. But um, anyway, back to the figure. If, if Gege continues to write and draw with the heat that he has right now, by the time JJK ends, it's going to be my favorite anime. And I just love these characters so much, man. I really just enjoy them. Even though this story strikes the feels so often, it's something like that that just really makes me love it, man. I just... These characters are amazing. These figures are amazing. Tamashi Nations has come so far since the first release. And I thought that Yuji was great. But then when we started getting other characters like uh, Akotsu and... Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Uh, Toto. Some of those are just outstanding figures. And then, of course, this hidden inventory arc, Gojo, which was just absolutely peak I just want to see what they're going to do next, man. I really hope that they announce something soon. We need Toji. I don't know what the holdup is, but there's so many characters that I feel like should have been announced by now. We need Toji. We need Nanami. We need um, my boy Inumaki. We need Maki. We need Panda. We need villains, yo. We need Choso. Why do we not have Choso? Why do we not have Mahito? Why do we not have Kenjaku? Like, we need more characters. It's just, they, they've got to come on with it. I've been trying to hold it in, but the more of these I get, the more happy I feel about this line continuing, if it continues from this point but um honestly when it comes to this figure i haven't said much about it because i'm sure you guys picked up how i felt about it throughout the entirety of this review this is an absolute peak figure for me solid 10 out of 10 literally the only thing they could have done to make it better is throw in some curses but it doesn't seem like that's anything they're going to be doing now i hate the fact that the parts can't be interchanged between the older figures but that's not something i'm going to say takes away from this figure in particular uh it just sucks that they decided to do that but um anyway solid solid figure 
I can't I can't brag on this enough. I really freaking love it, man. These two are some of the most enjoyable figures I have added to my collection in modern day. But anyway, again, beating a dead horse. Hope that you guys enjoyed this review. If so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. That always helps me out. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Make sure to hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload new content. And last but not least, follow me on everything you see listed in the description below to keep up with my activity outside of YouTube. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe wherever you are and uh, bye.